Hey guys, this video has in fact been inspired by another YouTuber, Gartner the Linux Gamer, and he talks about in a recent video on his channel why he thinks that Linux is the future of gaming. This is a particularly grand claim, so I will of course link to his video down in the description below. And yeah, go ahead and watch that video, probably, possibly before even watching this one so you get a bit of decent context. Uh, and also don't forget to subscribe to that lovely man's channel. So without further ado, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about why I think that Linux could be the future of gaming as we know it. So first off, let's talk a little bit about Valve and what they've done to, to bring gaming onto the Linux platform. Now, truth be told, they've actually been a really good citizen when it comes to Linux support. Their client runs really well on not only Ubuntu-based distributions, but um, it runs really well on Manjaro and on Solus as well, um, from my experience at least. Um, it's also probably one of the closest things we've got to like a, a cross-platform package manager of sorts. Uh, I know that we've got things like um, um, flat pack and, and snaps which are coming along uh, in leaps and bounds but to actually get a piece of software running across as many distributions as uh, possible putting it on steam is probably one of the better bets um, but uh, that aside uh, it is I think it's really good that Valve have actually put a lot of effort into uh, not only making their client work but also a lot of their titles a lot of their titles work really really well on the Linux platform of course a lot of it does come down to the individual publishers and we do see publishers some publishers put a lot of effort into getting their games working well across platforms and others especially you know we have seen in a lot of cases when it comes to crowdfunding projects where they promise a Linux build thinking that all it is is a matter of file export and then they've got a Linux binary which they can ship out only to realize that there's a little bit more bug fixing and testing required and uh, we've been burned quite a few times when it comes to crowdfunding but anyway that little rant aside I do actually think that there is big things for gaming on the Linux platform um, as a whole as well so many of you might be familiar with the Atari box which is an upcoming piece of hardware that should cost around $300, I think that's US dollars, uh, but that's also being crowdfunded by Atari themselves. Now Atari are a bit of a bigger company and we never really know uh, whether or not crowdfunding by companies like these is actually just a bit of a marketing scheme um, and, and as a way to spread the word. However, Atari have been going through some financial issues as of late. so. They could very well require the uh, the financial boost on this one. And now I do tend to have a policy against uh, backing things like this before, uh, be, uh, backing things like this in terms of crowdfunding because we've just been burnt so many times. And I think of the big one, Oculus Rift, where we were expi explicitly promised um, Linux support for the Oculus Rift. And well, once they got bought up by Facebook, we you know could say goodbye to that. So uh, anyway. Uh, that rant aside, um, I think that there are a lot of benefits um, to having this Steam OS operating system in play now. Now, a lot of people will point to the Steam box as a a failure or as a, a platform of pessimism when it comes to Linux gaming, uh, accusing Valve of not really committing to it, to putting the price point too high, uh, and in terms of software availability as well. However, it is important to bear in mind that if you take the Steam Box as a console, it has more games than the vast majority of consoles out on the market today. In fact, it might even have more games than any of the other uh, consoles about today, several thousand. In fact, there are more Linux games than I can play. I thought that, um, you know, well, basically all of my gaming dreams have come true when it comes to software availability. I'm not too attached to the AAA titles myself, and I'm happy to, to you know, browse through the thousands of games that are available, and I'm willing to support a developer and publisher that actually decides to go out into the Linux ecosystem, because at this point in time, it's not a matter of profitability, it's a matter of enthusiasm for the product that they're making and building and selling. So um, we often get um, publishers that are more proud and more genuinely enthusiastic about their works releasing for Linux. However, if you look at Valve as a company, they have never played the short game. They have always played the long game. If I remember correctly, the Steam client is something like 15 years old. It is ancient, but it's really only in the last um, you know, five or so years that it's really become super mainstream and the market leader in terms of buying games for PC. And 
Um, I think a lot of the reason for this is that Valve just have this slow burn rate. They just take ages to actually get their client and they, they don't choose viral success. They choose a slow build over a long period of time. They did so with their client and I'm sure that they're going to be doing so with the Steam Box as well. They're getting their operating system down right on their own hardware before rolling it out across uh, different projects. They also might not necessarily have a set idea about what this looks like either because this, the the whole uh, industry of gaming and technology in general changes so much as well. So, uh, we could very well see the beginning of a new era of gaming in the Atari box. Now, the Atari box, if I'm completely honest, is unlikely to turn the game on its head, but it is a sizable company taking an interest in Linux gaming. We've also seen the NES and SNES classics uh, brought to us on Linux-based uh, operating systems as well. As Gartner says, uh, they are Pi-based technologies, and really Linux is the leader in terms of uh, operating systems that you put on, on the Pi. However, that aside, Having a universal Steam OS operating system that can work across consoles has numerous benefits in and of itself. The biggest being security. We're seeing a lot more uh, online focus around games now, for better or for worse, but it does seem here to stay. Uh, it could mean more cross-platform multiplayer, but it also could mean um, that the, a lot of weight is lifted off the company like Atari's shoulders in regards to security uh, with the online element of these games consoles. If you've got one operating system that Valve can then patch and maintain uh, universally, it means that there's less, ch you know, that, that um, other pieces of hardware like the Atari box can be properly supported uh, long until, uh, you know, in, through their lifespan without Atari having to really do too much to, uh, to support it. They probably will, uh, you know, offer some aid and assistance here, but it definitely seems like the gaming industry can pool its efforts in regards to uh, developing a secure operating system here. And this can then be multiplied by the fact that, of course, the Linux kernel runs on, uh, you know, every Android operating, you know, every Android phone going, which means that there are even more engineers focused on patching all of the security holes. And, of course, the Linux kernel, um, as with any kernel, is not perfect in regards to security because that would be pretty much impossible. It does mean that there are more people developing it and it does mean that there are more eyes on it than ever before, um, meaning that more holes can be plugged faster and sooner, which I think in general is, is a pretty um, good thing. Uh, so that could mean that older hardware then gets a, a longer lifespan because it's constantly being supported um, and that means that you know it's still going to have the the latest versions of the clients which means that it can still keep uh, you know buying new games only limited by the hardware itself. In short, it basically makes a, for a very user-friendly PC. It takes the best elements of PC gaming uh, while at the same time uh, keeping it uh, friendly for console users. And I think this is a step in a, in a direction that people might be a lot more enthusiastic towards uh, once it gets rolling and once it gets fully, de you know, once it gets more developed. But this is a long road to travel and as it comes with long roads, Valve is a particularly good company um, that tends to go the distance on these kind of things with the exception of Half-Life 3. Maybe we'll get Half-Life 3. I don't know. Wouldn't it be weird if that was like a Linux exclusive? But overall, I think that uh, a lot of people will write off Steam OS and the Steam Box because, you know, the hardware is a bit expensive. Uh, the direction isn't as clear as it is with, say, other consoles. But then again, the lifespan um, and the life cycle of this overall project is a lot longer and therefore requires a lot more flexibility. But I think that the potential benefits in terms of cost saving for these companies, uh, in terms of developing games for as many users as possible, for as many consumers as possible, well, there are more opportunities there than there have been on any, any other platform in any other way. And the way that we're seeing Windows now do more and more lock-in in regards to their software, and it seems that uh, Windows wants to get away from its old, old model of selling uh, its operating system, but rather selling its software through its app store, we could see uh, companies like Valve um, and any other gaming company, for that matter, kind of get sidelined uh, by Windows just trying to take more money off the top of them. So um, it seems that having a, uh, a, a an entire ecosystem, an operating system, and network for gaming companies and gamers themselves to actually buy and sell on a platform, you know, a universal platform of games consoles, uh, is likely to be a lot more appealing in the very near future, or at least that's the way I see it. 
Um, but anyway, as a Linux advocate, I would also be incredibly biased. And there are certainly some things that we need to be cautious of. And this isn't necessarily all good on all fronts. But to be honest, I'm, you know, I see more positives than negatives. And I'm certainly excited for how this is going to go in the future. And to be honest, I think one of the biggest benefits, at least from my point of view, is that it brings console gamers and PC gamers closer together um, and makes uh, cross-platform play a lot easier um, to achieve. So, um, yeah, more people playing more games in uh, a way that offers up more freedom. I think uh, that, generally speaking, is a good thing. And, um, yeah, I think that's about what I've got to say on it. Uh, um, bit of a rambly video as well eh, you've seen rambly videos on this channel before I'm sure but I just wanted to share my thoughts I think Gartner did a great video so don't forget to check out that video if you haven't already of course link in the description let me know your thoughts down in the uh, comment section below and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now